Like, what am I doing? I'm doing it for the show. Field of 68 till I die. This is the Field of 68 After Dark Show, the only place that you need to be for college hoops every single night. All right, welcome into the Field of 68 After Dark, presented by Bet Rivers. I am Stadium Insider Jeff Goodman. I'm joined tonight by former Wake Forest star Randolph Childress and SI's rising star Kevin Sweeney. We are on Sirius XM ESPN Radio Channel 84 each and every night. You can also find us on the Field of 68 YouTube channel and also on Twitter. So we've got a crazy night tonight in college hoops with six more teams punching their ticket, including one whose fans threw some haymakers in the stands tonight. We'll tell you about that. We'll tell you the teams and the coaches with the most to gain and lose this week, and also the league tournament that we would pick if we could pick any tournament to attend. Before we get going, make sure you join our bracket pool at bracketfanatics.com. You can find a link to the bracket group in the description below. It's free to enter. There's a $500 prize pool, and if you win and make it to New Orleans, you can come kick it with us. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but... You can learn a lot from kicking it with RC, at least. Maybe not me and Sweeney, but uh, all right. Listen, we we had a big night. Again, uh, six bids. The final one there by Gonzaga, uh, 82-69. They just finished up getting their revenge against St. Mary's. Uh, five mid-major bids tonight. I'll start with you, RC. What was the uh, takeaway, the biggest takeaway? What stood out to you about uh, the, the five uh, automatic bids that were handed out. Uh, to be honest, the biggest thing that jumped out to me was the fight at Bryant. I mean, again, for me, I'm not as familiar with some of the, the lower leagues and they playing at home and I'm just used to it being a neutral and not the fans and not saying it that way. So seeing that to me, just, I, I couldn't stop replaying this all night long. <laughs> and then you got players trying to yeah. get in the crowd like it, it just stuck with me. And I know it doesn't overshadow anything, you know, congratulations to Brian. I actually reached out to one of their assistants and congratulated those guys. I'm happy for them. As we know, it's, it's always special when it's a one big lead, but that just jumped off to me. Yeah. That one dude in the crowd with his shirt off looked like Sweeney a little bit. I thought <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was getting after it. He was ready yeah, to throw, throw down. Like that guy, man. I don't get after it like that guy. Well, it was like, listen, like, Come on, guys. I mean, you outnumber that Wagner crew by like, you know, at least 50 to one easily. I mean, it was just and it did. It took away from what was, you know, Brian's first ever NCAA tournament appearance. They beat the living crap in more yeah. ways uh, than one uh, out of Wagner. I mean, they what was it? What was it 36 to six coming out of the gates? It was bad. It Peter was Kiss was really. And part of the thing was, let, let's face it, like it was embarrassing. So Wagner's fans, which are probably mostly close friends and family that went to, to Smithfield, Rhode Island, they're watching their team get absolutely uh, demolished. And then Peter Kiss is just, abs- I mean, he is just, he's taunting every chance he can get, Sweeney. So, uh, all right, RC, let, let me go back to you on this one. As a former player, mm-hmm. do you just, if you turn around, have you ever been involved? Have you ever seen anything like this in any game that you played um, in, in, in college or pro not, not in front of everyone. I've seen stuff in the back in the locker room and things of that nature, but I've never seen in the crowd like that. Uh, I, I was shocked by it. I mean, I, I didn't expect to see anything like that. And then you see the one player going up in the crowd Yeah, and I'm thinking yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, like there is, that's never a good idea. Like, I don't know never. how, what, you know, so the only thing I assumed with him, I didn't know if it was, he was related to someone that was involved directly with yeah. the fight, and I would understand and that would make you go in. That'd be my that's guess. The only thing, that's the only thing I can think of was that he he was related yeah. to whoever that was. That's the only excuse I can understand him going in the crowd for. You know, I, I think one thing, Jeff, like Brian has literally never been here before, and their students right. didn't know how to be here before, and, and there were a lot of great videos of stuff. You know, yesterday Wagner did their shoot around and and. And when they were leaving, the, the students were lined up to get tickets and they all like booed him out of the place. And it was like, wow, this is cool. Mid-major basketball, like the whole campus is engaged. Like, this is awesome. And the students, I mean, they showed out in a huge way. Like I, 
I, I can't say I watch Brian all the time, but I probably watch them more than the average Joe. Uh, and I've never seen that gym packed like that. That was awesome. It was everything you want. And I think, you know, unfortunately, especially when some beverages get consumed, you know, you guys, you know, dudes start saying things that you, you shouldn't say. And when you're so close to, you know, family members of people, you're, you're just asking for something really bad to happen. So, you know, fortunately it didn't escalate any further. I mean, again, it's such a you know tight crowd that it could have gotten really, really bad, really, really fast. But, you know, it, it, it stinks that this is what we're talking about and not the fact that like Peter kiss is a bucket and, and that Brian gets to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time. And Jared Grosso gets to turn this thing around. Like it, it, it stinks that we're leading with this, but you know, it is what it is. And, you know, thankfully it seems like no one was seriously injured. No one was, you know, no, no, could have been a lot worse. Yeah. It honestly could have been a lot worse because you had, yeah. again, you had a ton of students. They're drunk. You probably had close friends and family, and, and they're completely outnumbered. And then they took the, the teams off the court. Luckily, it was a route, so the game was never in doubt coming back. But what if that was a close game and you had a you know 20-minute delay like that? And, you know, like, I, I don't know. I mean, again – fortunately we weren't in that position. All right, Sweeney, what, what stood out to you tonight? What was the big takeaway for you? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it was the most dangerous mid major that was on the court tonight, South Dakota state. And they, they got everything they could handle from North Dakota state, you know, a rivalry game. Uh, that gym was awesome. It always is up there. That summer league tournament. We were talking off the air, Jeff. I mean, it is always a fun atmosphere because it's all state schools. They're all you know, drivable. Everybody comes out. Got a lot of alumni in the region. So, you know, I wasn't surprised, but I mean, they got everything they could handle. And it, and it was peak March. I mean, it, it is a team that has won, you know, 29 games that went undefeated in the league that is now, you know, 40 minutes separating themselves from everything that they wanted to have or getting stuck on the NIT. And, you know, you know, they, they took some punches and found a way to win and kind of prove why they can be so dangerous because, you know, they, they're elite shooting the ball. They shot 40% from three today. Uh, they're like 44% for the season, which is the best in the country by a significant margin. Uh, but the big kid on the inside, Doug Wilson, is, is the, the X factor. I think you always yep. think you know, when you're, you're looking for those teams that can win a game in the NCAA tournament, do they have a guy that can handle a power five big guy? And I think Doug Wilson is the type of guy. He's been in that program for a couple of years. He's big, he's tough, he's physical. You know, he, he gives you an opportunity, I think, to, to match up on the inside uh, with, with, with a four seed or a five seed. The other uh, – we'll go through the other ones that punch their ticket tonight. Uh, Wright State, Scott Nagy, terrific coach. In the horizon, they come back. They're down 16. They beat Northern Kentucky. Wright State, the number four seed. Uh, Trey Calvin with a huge shot down the stretch there. Uh, the other one was Delaware, of course, Delaware. Jeff Borzello. We got to give Borzello credit there. Uh, his Delaware Blue Hands beat UNCW, and uh, they beaten Towson last night. And now Martin Inglesby in his sixth season uh, takes them to their first tournament since 2014. So somewhere, uh, Jeff Borzello is using even more hair product than usual tonight. Uh, but I thought, listen, the, to me, the most unique – situation and the one that probably should get more pub even than the the fight in Bryant was the A Sun because Bellerman is playing Jacksonville in the title game. Jacksonville had beaten Jacksonville State, who was the number one overall seed. And Bellerman is in the second year of a four year division one transition, which means they are not eligible to play in the NCAA tournament until after their fourth season. Well the A-Sun allowed Bellarmine to play in the A-Sun tournament. And I talked to somebody from the league, and he said, listen, we're all about inclusion. We want to give kids opportunities. We, we, they actually they oppose this, this four-year transition rule. They want to get a cut down, and a lot of other uh, conferences want to get a cut down, too, you know, to two years. A couple of years ago, Merrimack won their league here in the NEC right near me, and uh, they, they did not play in the NEC tournament after winning the regular season title. Anyway, so if Bellerman wins tonight, it means Jacksonville State, the number one seed, gets the NCAA tournament uh, berth. So Jacksonville State is doing whatever they're doing, watching, and sure enough, Bellerman gets the victory. So Jacksonville State backdoors the, their way in. There's no other way of saying it. They backdoored their way in, and we had a chance to catch up with Ray Harper, the Jacksonville State head coach, who's now dancing 
after not playing tonight. All right, now pleased to be joined by Jacksonville State Head Coach Ray Harper of the NCAA Tournament-bound Jacksonville State. How does that sound, Ray? This has been a crazy, crazy few days, has it not? It really has. I mean, you and I have talked about it. I mean, we had no idea until after the game. I'd already met with our kids until I realized that, hey, we still have a chance to go to the NCAA Tournament. Uh, I thought for sure we were going to NIT, and then I find out we had a chance that we we could have not gone to the NIT or NCAA. So just really happy for our kids that, that we're going to continue playing. You've been coaching for a long time. You've been around this business for a long time. Have you ever seen anything uh, like this where the team that wins the conference tournament is ineligible so they take the number one seat? I haven't. Uh, I'm sure it's happened, um, but I'm glad it happened today. Uh, and I knew it would be a great game. I mean yeah. – you know, Coach Davenport does an unbelievable job at Bellarmine. Uh, really good basketball team. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about what the job Coach Mincy did at Jacksonville this year. I mean, uh, they were as hard to score against as anybody we played all season long. Are you going to send like a bottle of wine or something to Scotty Davenport, beer, what, whatever his drink, bourbon? I don't know what it is. Probably not. We, we probably won't have time right now. We just, we just got to get we got to get these guys focused. Uh, yeah. Um, whoever we're getting ready to play next week and we're excited I, we we took a couple of days off and today was our first day back in the gym and you could tell there was we were good I thought we competed but just that wondering are we going to NIT or are we going to NCAA tournament I'm, and I'm sure they're excited here this evening so what did you do watching this game this this Bellarmine game tell me what you were doing during this game uh well when you had texted me earlier I was run, picking some clothes up to cleaners dropping some things off the mill, uh, grabbing some food. My AD texted me, where are you watching the game? And I said, I'm really not watching it right now. Who's winning? Um, so when I got uh, finally got home, I think Bellarmine was up six in, yeah. in the second half, and then they went on a little bit of a run. And um, what a great crowd they had there today as well. <sighs> well, listen, uh, congrats. I, I don't know what you call it, what you did today, how you got in, but – I don't think it matters, does right. it? it? It doesn't. We'll be playing somewhere next weekend, and, and we'll be excited to play. Talk about a unique situation there, guys, with Ray Harper, Jacksonville State, getting in the NCAA tournament without even playing today in the title game. All right, so, RC, is that – what 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 should happen? I mean, you know, you got Bellarmine in the second year of this four-year transition. Is it the Atlantic Suns' fault that they let him play in the tournament, or is it the NCAA's fault that there should not be any transition period? Uh, all the above. It's the dumbest damn rule I've ever – if they're, if you're going to let them in the league and let them play in a tournament, it, then why why not let – if they win it, most of the time because you're expecting them not to be very good anyway. Right. That, that's what you're expecting. You're expecting them not to be very good. So you're punishing them for coming in and being and being good. Like, they're just being punished by it. It's the, that's the dumbest damn thing I've heard in a long time. I mean, there's a lot of stupid <laughs> – sh- sh- it's a lot of stupid stuff, man, that goes on. But when this is – I've heard the rule before, but I'm kind of like, I don't don't nothing to worry about. But now more than ever, when you get the transfers, you can flip it quickly. We've seen it all over the right. country. And now, so they got to wait two more years. I was happy if you if you saw the celebration, then you know yeah. it this 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 get rid of this. Cause them kids celebrated like they was going to the NCAA and they're done. And it was incredible to see. I was so happy for them. But that's the dumbest crap I've seen in a long time. I mean, get get that, vote that out now. That should be done before the final four. Like that's ridiculous. It, it's got to go through all this this paperwork and these committees and everything like that. It, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. I am going to write something about it when I catch my breath. 
in the next few weeks how this rule should be changed. And again, the the bottom line is you shouldn't have to wait. You shouldn't have to wait. If if you're if you're in the D1, what's the big deal? You should be able to and for Bellerman now, Sweeney, I want to see them be eligible and be able to play in the NIT because Jacksonville State, they got an automatic NIT berth. Now they're going to the NCAA tournament. Bellerman should be allowed and should be invited to the NIT. Yeah, it stinks that they won't be. It's interesting. So last year, Cal Baptist women's basketball team went undefeated regular season, yeah. won the WAC tournament. They could play in the WNIT. But in men's, the NIT and the NCAA are tied together. So you're not eligible for either. So you know, presumably they'll play in the CBI or the, the TBC, yeah. which is the old CIT. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a rule. You know, I had talked to Jared Olson, the head coach, at Cal, Cal Baptist, their women's basketball coach, when they were going through this process last year when they were undefeated. And he was like, you know, I, I think there need to be some changes. I understand why there should be some transition period, but maybe we could, you know, mess with the money where we don't get any NCAA tournament units if we right. win and we get it. You know, so there's less incentive to kind of jump up and down. The original reason for the rule was you don't want teams, oh, we have a good group. Let's try to move to D1, make the NCAA tournament. We'll move back. We're not really committed to it. If you're going to be in, you're going to be in. Um, but I think, you know, there's got to be something we can do here that makes more sense than a four-year period, especially in the world of the portal. I mean, it, it, you know, a full class. I mean, guys are in and out. You're going to have three three different sets of players by then. It's absurd. Right. But but that's the thing. You're going up. You, if, you, if you're worried about going up and going down, you're worried about them. If they, if they make money going to the NCAA, chances are they're going to stay up. You just cost them money. Right. Like, that's, that's right. why it doesn't make – this is as simple. This doesn't even make sense. This is one of those things you look at and say, hey, we made this rule back in the inception of, the, of, 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 of collegiate athletics. This, this is a quick fix. Sit down. Hey, guys, we all agree this is stupid. Yeah, all right, let's go. It's done. It's not even – that's a, but, that's a, but that's a you're, Zoom call. But you think it's reasonable minds with the NCAA. No. It, it's no, not. No, that's no. the problem. You've got no. people who have no idea what they're doing and, and they've got ulterior motives. Anyway, G Gonzaga got some revenge tonight against St. Mary's coming up next. Kevin Sweeney is going to tell you though, why he would not take Chet Holmgren with the number one overall pick. You're clear. We look back on this, Jeff. You talking yeah. about the A Sun? The A Sun had five teams win over twenty games. Freaking Florida Golf Coast got fired. So imagine if in one of those couple of years, if Fly and him had did this and won a tournament, yep. he still have a job. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No, you're right, you're right. Uh, Greg, we got any questions? Oh, we sure do. Chat? This is a good one for RC, who was in attendance for the crazy shot last night. Can Chattanooga make the Sweet Sixteen? What do you think, RC? I don't know if they shoot it, shoot the three well enough to do it, but they are the one mid-major team that I think that are built, one of the few that are built to beat a high major. They get the right matchup. They're going to give someone problems. Two good guards and a big boy in, in Sylvia yes. who can match up. in depth. The job he was doing on the perimeter yesterday oh, against a team yep. that goes five out. Oh. The, the best defensive team I've seen all year. And wow. I know they were playing against it for – well, RC uh, watched a lot of ACC basketball, so we should be careful. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. That's seconds. true. That's true. <laughs> All right, one more here. Uh, a different yep. mid-major we're asking yep. about. This is from Nine Route. Uh, it says Bryant and Peter Kiss are dangerous. Of all the potential one to two seeds, who could Bryant upset? I, I don't. I, I don't think they can Ten seconds. defend anybody. That's yeah, I don't think they're upsetting anybody. Peter, Peter Kiss isn't doing what he did tonight against. I'm uh, going to George Pop someone seats. though. Under Here you go. Seven. All right, welcome back to the Field of 68s After Dark. I am Jeff Goodman. I'm joined by Randolph Childress, Kevin Sweeney, and the last automatic bid of the night. It's not really. Uh, much of an automatic bid because Gonzaga is going to get the number one overall seed, but the Zags got some revenge on St. Mary's, a St. Mary's team that beat them a week or so ago in a game that, that was maybe as surprising uh, as any recently, just because I, I saw that St. Mary's team guys earlier this year in person against Colorado state. And I walked away being like, yeah, they're probably a fringe tournament team. But then you forget how good Randy Bennett is. And he is one of the, and I've said this over and over, one of the top 10 X's and O's guys in college basketball. What he does with his talent 
is remarkable. He doesn't have the the Patty Millses or the even the Mickey McConnells or the Omar Samhans right now. He, he's got some good players, but not great players. And what he's done right now to get them where they're probably looking at a, a number five seed is is incredibly impressive. But on the flip side, and, and we'll start with his Zags, Kevin. Um, this team wrapped up the number one overall seed tonight, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. You know, maybe if Baylor wins the, the Big 12 tournament, you know, there'll be a conversation because they'd have, you know, 15 quadrant one wins at that point. That'd be really yeah. impressive. Uh, but I think, you know, at 25 and three with the top metrics, it, it's going to be Gonzaga. Uh, and, you know, for the second year in a row, they'll be the number one overall seed. Uh, for the fourth year in a row, if we count 2020, when you know, the bracket matrix plans it out, you know, every bracketologist Gonzaga is a one seed that year. You know, so for basically four years in a row, Gonzaga has been a one seed. Uh, they had one year where they went 32 and five and got a four seed. Uh, and the year before that, they went to the, the national championship game. So uh, what Mark Fury is doing up there, it, it seems to be working, Jeff. I don't know about you. It seems to be working. So are you buying, RC, that this Gonzaga team, because we've said like last year it was Baylor, Gonzaga, and everybody else. Is there as much of it? I know they're totally different Gonzaga teams. But do you feel like this team is equally as dangerous as last year's, even though I know Jalen Suggs was a guy who could do some things that obviously they don't have anybody on this team, but but you've got a defender like Chet Holmgren who gives you that dimension that they didn't have a year ago. I think they're a different team, but I, I still have them as a favorite. Uh, even tonight, I don't think Chet played very well tonight, but they had Watson stepping up and just filled in, you know, filled in admirably. You know, he went five or six for 10 points tonight five rebounds and so yep. that's that was that's my thing with with Gonzaga I don't think they're relying on one person to be dominant they can they can move around pieces more yeah. everyone else we're like all right this guy's got to show up or, or and be at his best or they're right. not going to go forward I think they're one of I, I think they're probably the only team because even the teams we're high on like Kentucky if we take if, if Oscar Shibwe gets in foul trouble they're a different team I think they're one team that can get away with foul trouble more or a guy not be playing his best game than any team in the country. So I, I agree with that. But my concern is I don't think Mark Few has utilized his bench as much as I thought he would this year. Like, I really thought Nolan Hickman, yeah. when I was there against Texas, I thought Hickman was going to be a guy that ultimately played 20 minutes every game. Every game. Yeah. And I thought Hunter Salas – would come along. Like, he didn't play at, really at all in that game. But I thought, like, second half of the year, when they're playing against WCC teams, he'd find a way to get him going, and this would be a strong eight-man rotation. And it's really not. It's re no. They've got five or six dudes that can all hurt you. But I don't know if I trust Nolan Hickman as much as I thought I would trust Nolan Hickman at this point, Kevin. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think the – the depth has been great. I think the other thing with Hickman and, and Salas is they give you the, the, the athleticism and, and the pedigree that some of these guys, you know, don't really have. And I think you saw yeah. in the Duke game going back, I think to Alabama game as well, to a certain extent, but I think the Duke game, it was most obvious. And the Baylor game last year that Gonzaga has struggled when they've dealt with teams that have overwhelming levels of athleticism. You know, when, when teams can just make every pass difficult and kind of blow up their actions, yeah, Gonzaga's going to score because their guys are so smart. They're going to cut off and uh, and make good decisions and, and hit shots and, and move the basketball. But it's going to be harder for them, and they're not going to be able to get stops at, at as quite as high a level. And so, you know, I, I had hoped, I think, in the preseason that, that Hickman and Salas could kind of provide that. They haven't really. I mean, I think Hickman gives them some good minutes. He can, you know, hit a shot but, but also handle the ball. And he's done a good job, I think, defensively. Like he's a solid, you know, for a freshman, I don't think he's a bad defender, um, but they haven't made the impact. I think you'd hoped. And so I think, you know, when you're looking at when they match up with a Duke again, or they match up with an Arizona who's super athletic, you know, how, how, how do they play? And I think to me, so much of that's going to be, can they get enough stops? And I think a lot of that sits on Chet and his ability to protect the rim because they're going to need him kind of flying around and, and, and taking things away at the basket because otherwise you know, I think they're going to struggle to get stops, but I think they're obviously an elite team. You know, they're, they're, they're the earned number one. There's no question. You know, they've they've had a tremendous year, uh, but I don't, I don't necessarily think they feel so overwhelming the way they did a season ago because I don't think they're quite as explosive because they don't have subs. No, you're right. The one thing I'll say is that 
another question mark of mine was how they shoot the ball coming into the year, and they've shot it really well collectively. Like all these guys, Bolton, Chet, I, I, I really, I'm a big Strother guy. I oh, think yeah, he's going to be terrific. I, I, I'm not going to say he's being held back because he's had his moments, but I, I think he's kind of that guy that sometimes gets lost a little bit in the shuffle with them, but he's kind of that X factor guy for me that, you know, if, if somebody is struggling, he's, he's fully capable of going for 20 and he has, and and that's what you were talking about. RC is like their balance, their ability that if true Timmy somehow gets, you know, matched up against somebody with length and athleticism and he struggles, you've got other guys that can step forward and, and, and get, you know, four other guys in double figures. I think that's the biggest thing. Like we talked about, they, they just got multiple guys. They're not dependent upon that one guy. And when you get through this conference tournament, you got to win six games. Yeah. Ultimate goal. And, and it's hard to do against a scout against a scouting report. And the more guys you got that can balance scoring, the more likely you're out of, you know, you're to be successful. All right, I need you to talk some sense into Sweeney Randolph <laughs> about Chad Holmgren now. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try to educate Sweeney on why. Uh, well, actually, I, I think Sweeney actually is right about this uh, on Chet. To be honest, I don't know where he's got him in his pecking order. He doesn't have him at one. I know that. Where do you have him on your on, on your Sweeney big board right now? <laughs> so I have Jabari Smith number one. I, I think to me, I would be open to Chet at two. I think I would lean towards Ben Caro at two and then Chet at three. Um, but, but, you know, I, I think again, and I'm going to let RC uh, clap back here if he wants, but to me, the, the thing that concerns me with Chet is that against the best teams that they've played, you know, he's struggled. And again, a lot of that was early in the season when he was still finding his footing. So, you know, he can prove me wrong in the NCAA tournament when he plays high major teams with big time athletes, but you know, he has struggled both St. Mary's games, like pretty, pretty significantly. And I, and I don't need people coming in and saying, Oh, well, he, he balled out against San Francisco last night. Uh, you know, cause they're a top 25 Ken Palm team. Yeah. I, I think a lot of guys would ball out against Bova Markovetsky and Zane Meeks up front. Like it wasn't even Masalski <laughs> who's going to be a Euro league guy. I mean, those, I no, no disrespect to Bova Markovetsky and to Zane Meeks and to Josh Coonan. Uh, but those guys don't stand a chance against any NBA prospect. RC? I can't argue. I can't argue with them. I, I I agree. I think it's the same. And I have my concern isn't just him showing up in games, because again he's young. You know he's, they're, they're freshmen. But <laughs> I, I worry about him physically. I just don't know if physically he can take the next step and then go against grown men. I I don't think his body is built to add a ton of weight. You know he has that Kevin Durant type body. The difference is Kevin Durant's a guard. And he's not a guard. He's he's a forward. And and I just don't know how much weight he can gain. And then you got to be really careful with him, how he puts on a weight and he plays. And he needs to go somewhere with a, a physical guy that's going to allow him to do what he does. And he's going to need time. So I talked to an NBA GM for a while uh, Saturday, actually, before the Duke Carolina game. So on the phone with him. And I asked him that. I don't even know why we got to talking about Chet, but we did. I think I just wanted to find out who he had number one. And he said to me, he might not take Chet in his top three. He might take Jaden Ivey over Chet Holmgren because he said, we've never really had a guy with that body build yeah. in the NBA. It, it, he actually said, we've never had kind of a, a guy with, with the shoulders. Even like He's kind of got the hunchback like Kevin McHale had. Now, Kevin McHale was broad. He had big shoulders, but the way he kind of he, he's hunched over that, you know, he, he kind of compared him to McHale, but uh, in, in that way, and he did, he worried whether he'll listen, he's kind of the opposite of Zion in, in, in the way that you worry about their bodies, right? Zion carried too much. Chet doesn't carry enough. And you wonder how is he going to be able to, to put it on again, because he doesn't have the shoulders to be able to put on that type of weight. So I, it's going to be interesting, are. but I'm with you, Sweeney. I would go Jabari one. I would go Paulo two. But I think some NBA teams are going to be terrified of missing potentially on Chet because if he hits his ceiling, listen, he can't play in the NBA next year. He can't strength wise. He can't. He's struggling right. with college physicality right now. The biggest games right. when, when teams have been physical with him, when he's not getting darted by Pacific, 
Yeah. He's struggling physicality yeah. wise. It's a different. Uh, he's world. a second contract guy that you bring him in on and you say like, all right, it's going to take some time. Well, again, are you going to do that when you know you could throw Paulo out there tomorrow physically? That's the thing I was going to ask you guys, because I'm going to throw this name out at you. Jermaine O'Neal. Now, Sweeney, I don't know if you remember Jermaine O'Neal. But Took when he time. got drafted, no, I'm sorry. When Jermaine O'Neal got drafted, they he didn't even play. It, it was, right. we're going to work you out individually, introduce him to the strength coach. Yep. That's your rookie. year. Now, he turned out to be a hell of a player, so it's not an indictment sure on him. Jermaine O'Neal is a hell of a player. But when he, as it, being there, when he got drafted, it wasn't even, didn't even think about playing him. It was, you're going to go down here to the weight room. This is your new best friend. We'll see you next year. And then we'll bring you out here practice and working out. The problem is Jermaine, it was, you know, was a high school similar, similarly, I mean, a similar situation, similar right. build almost. He's Chet's a little taller, yeah. but no one's, but that, the difference is Jermaine wasn't top three, top four. You weren't talking a top three pick and no one's going to take a top three pick and just say, all right, you know, you just sit and go. But that's what they need to do. If you want to protect your investment, you're going to draft this dude and treat him like Jermaine O'Neal. Let him go in the weight room to get stronger to help you so his game can flourish. If you throw him out there, you, you kill his confidence, you, get, you risk getting him hurt, and you risk your job. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think he's, he's a couple of years away, and, and you've got to get him on a great uh, strength program to be able to get him so that – because guys are going to drive him into the rim. I don't care how good a shot blocker he is. It doesn't matter. He's got no base right now to be able to handle it when men post him up. Like you said, Sweeney, in the WCC, he's having enough trouble right now, uh, you know, holding his position. Now, again, he's so long. And the one – listen, the one thing we can – we can talk all we want about the negatives of Chet Holmgren. Well, the positives are – the dude's shooting like 45% from three this year at his size. And he, he is a terrific shot blocker. So if he could put on the weight, I guess what I was saying is these GMs are terrified because if you miss yes. on him, he could be a unicorn type player. He could be a dominant player in the NBA. If, if, if he can put on this weight. All right. Make sure you don't go anywhere because when we get back, I'm going to tell you the coaches that have the most riding on this coming week. You're clear. All right. All that talk all about right. all that talk all right. about Chet. Craig, we got anything? Craig, we got anything? Yes, we do. All that talk about Chet has a couple people in the chat wondering: Should Chet just come back to school next year? No. So no. So funny. So uh, you know, you don't come back to school. Should he? Yes, but you don't do it these days. Like I can't remember the last dude who came back to school. Marcus Smart, maybe was the last one I remember that like went back to school when he was going to be a top five, 10 pick. It's just guys leave now when they're freaking two way guys. So yeah, I mean, should he? Sure. In a perfect ideal world, he should come back, but he's not good. No. All right. A lot of other debates in here of Gonzaga versus Arizona. We got Barrett Hartman mm. saying Arizona's mm. personnel is better than Gonzaga. They're like Gonzaga on steroids. What do you think? Go 30 ahead, seconds. Boys. I mean, I think that Coloco could be a Timmy uh, eraser. He already did it Kofi and Hunter Dickinson. And I really like I, – I think Arizona would beat Gonzaga. I'm saying. Ooh, that's a what's hot take. Matchup, what, what's the matchup on 15. Shet, though? Bellis, he's physical enough. Ten. Yeah. He is tough enough. I mean, he's, he's giving away he's some length, enough. but he's he's definitely yeah. tough enough. Be a good matchup. Five seconds. Yeah, no doubt. All right, welcome back to the Field of Sixty Eights After Dark. I am Jeff Goodman, joined by Randolph Childress and Kevin Sweeney. And I mentioned it earlier, but. Uh, we are running a Field of 68 pool over at BracketFanatics.com, the best website to host your NCAA tournament pool. Providing it, It's going to provide a bracket experience unlike anything else. Bracket Fanatics is similar to Yahoo and ESPN. You can invite your friends, make picks, watch those picks go up in flames. But what makes Bracket Fanatics different 
is that they eliminate the hardest part of running a pool, the payouts. Everyone that joins your pool must pay an entry on the site. Once the NCAA tournament is over, Bracket Fanatics handles the payouts for you based on whatever the parameters you set. So you don't have to worry about chasing down guys like Sweeney to make sure he actually paid his buy-in. And you can make side bets uh, all tournament long because who doesn't love the side bets, right? Uh, your bracket may have been busted, but you can still make it all back once, you know, Randolph gets a, a little too overconfident. Uh, so head over to bracketfanatics.com. Join the Field of 68's bracket group. It's free to enter. And make sure you host your pool on Bracket Fanatics for the absolute best March Madness experience. Uh, sign up today. All right, guys. Big week, big, big week for a lot of teams, a lot of coaches. I'm going to hit you with what should be an easy question, but I don't know if it will be. And we haven't talked this through at all. This is completely out of nowhere. I can't wait to hear your answers. But my question to you is the team or teams with the most to gain or lose, not name Xavier, because I think everybody and their mother is going to choose Xavier. If you say pick one team, it's Xavier. They're on the bracket. They've been terrible the last month or so. Uh, Sweeney, I'll start with you. Who, who's the team right now with the most in the line? Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing is that the bubble feels relatively settled, right? I mean, like, you've got Indiana and Rutgers kind of fighting for it. Uh, SMU's right on the cut line. I think that really is my answer. I mean, SMU, you know, mm. this year with, you know, this is their group. You know, Kendrick Davis is a senior. He's been around this thing. You're yep. right at the cut line. I mean, I, I think I literally have them as my last team in the field. If they don't have to win the conference tournament, but they have to make some noise. They probably have to beat Memphis to feel like they're in on uh, Selection Sunday. And so, you know, I, I just think for me, you know, considering the struggles that they've had the last several seasons, this this one means a lot to, to get to get to the NCAA tournament, even if it's just the first four with Kendrick. You're not going to get another Kendrick Davis often. I mean, he is a special dude for them you know, thousand plus point score, high level assist guy. If you, if you can't parlay that into an SWA tournament bid, you kind of wonder when the next one's coming. RC. Believe it or not, I'm going to go to Wake. Ooh, they're, 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 look they're, at you. They're, they're, no, they're right there that, you know, they can ill afford to slip up in this tournament to start, you know, they, they are like the last four in. And, and so you slip up and, you know, and, and don't show up tomorrow. I mean, where, where does that put you? I mean, I, that that could very well slide them out. And when you got coach of the year in the ACC and player of the year and a second team in Laravia, I mean, don't get me wrong. They got they, they've they've earned the right where they are now, but they they're barely in, and they got a lot of pressure tomorrow to come out and perform in the ACC tournament. I'm going to go with the Big Ten, like three teams. I'm going to choose all three. Uh, I'll start with Indiana. Indiana. They got to win at least one. I think they, I think they win one. They're in. I think they're in in the first four. I know every bracketologist is telling me they got to win two. I still believe if they win one, they get in the first four because I think the NCAA tournament committee, they're going to be looking for big names to get in that first four. Um, Michigan, I think to get out of the first four, they got to beat Indiana. I think if they lose, shoot, you, you could have both of them playing in different first four games. Who knows? And, and Rutgers, they're another one. I think they got to win. I mean, they got a four seed, which honestly might hurt them in a way because, you know, you're talking about probably getting what Iowa, yeah, in 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 the quarterfinals. That's not an easy game. I think everybody yeah. likes Iowa right now. Like Iowa's kind of that pick right now that everybody's falling in love with because we see they've got Keegan Murray who's terrific, but they've got more than just Keegan Murray. They got to get Patrick McCaffrey back healthy. Um, so I would go three. I, I know I chose three of them there. I took three off the board. Uh, who else are we forgetting about? You know, in terms of the SMU? bubble, there's – yeah, I mentioned SMURC. I mean, yeah. VCU, um, yep. you know, they've got they've got work to do. How about uh, Dayton? Yeah, Day Dayton probably has to win the A-10 tournament, maybe if they made a run to the final. Uh, same thing with North Texas. North Texas is really – you know, that UTEP loss hurt them this weekend, but they have a yeah. chance – you know, if they don't win it, but they, they really should kind of the situation like Loyola Chicago was in the past, this past weekend, they've got a shot if they don't win it, but you'd rather take care of your business. Um, 
you know, and then I think there's obviously a case, you know, some of the teams in the top line, you know, Kentucky, if they win the SEC tournament, could get a number right. one seed. I think that's important. Um, you know, Auburn trying to stay on the number one line. Kansas could make a push for the one if they win the Big 12. You know, I mentioned earlier, Baylor could maybe make a push for one number one overall. Uh, you know, should they win the Big 12 tournament, have 15 quadra one wins. So there's there's a lot, there's a lot here without a doubt. The the coach with the most to gain. Let, let, let's go in a positive direction. Mm-hmm. By the way, I, I think another one going back to a team with the with the most to gain might be Alabama. Because they can get Kentucky in their second game. And I think they can get some mojo back that they really haven't had. Like they, they've been so inconsistent all year, and, and it feels like an eternity ago that they beat um they beat Gonzaga in Seattle, right? They beat Houston. It, it feels like so long ago that we were talking about Alabama. I mean, we were talking about Alabama at one point as a legitimate Final Four contender, and, and nobody said that for a, at least a month now. So I would put Alabama in that kind of group of, of teams that you know could gain or lose a lot, momentum-wise. Uh, coaches, go ahead, RC. Who, who, who's a coach that, that's got a lot in the line this week? I think Penny does. I, I yeah. think Penny has a lot on the line. I mean, we went from, you know, they started out with all these expectations, all this talent. Yep. It looked like it imploded. And now they've gotten it back together. So there's going to be change. There's going to be a lot of change there. What does it look like? I, I, I think Penny has a lot. He can come out of this Are you buying them? Randolph, are you buying Memphis? Like some people I hear are like buying them now and like, man, I wouldn't want to play Memphis in the NCAA tournament. I'm still cautiously optimistic about him and saying, like, it's the AAC. Let's settle down here. They're the most talented team in the the league, though, and they have the talent that can go against anybody else. So they're a team that if you're not on your best, no matter what you're, 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 you know, wherever you, you you know, you're, you're you're lined up to be, they're talented enough to beat you. So I think that, you know, they're going to be able to play match up with your athleticism Point guard play, we know, is always going to be a concern for them. But aside from that, they got the talent when they go out there, and we know they got the ability to defend. Yeah, yeah. Kevin? Yeah, I've got two for you. The first one is is North Carolina and Hubert Davis. I think, you know, it's so important for this team to build off of what they did against Duke heading into the NCAA tournament. Because, look, you know, yes, they've won five straight, but that included an overtime win over Syracuse, a struggle past Louisville. Like, yep. like let's not act as though North Carolina came into that Duke game, you know, firing on all cylinders. They weren't. And I think, you know, there's so much you could build for, for this group if, if they make a good run here. And they don't have to win it, but, you know, you, you can't get bounced early. It, it would be such a, I think, demoralizing thing to, to have all that energy and then losing your first game in, in the conference tournament. And I think the other coach is Mike Woodson at Indiana. I know we kind of mentioned them already, but – you know, it's easy to recruit and easy to sell a brand when you haven't won any games, and you haven't lost any games. And if they miss the NCAA tournament in year one in a very similar way to you know some of the struggles that they've had the last several years, you know, late season you know, collapses, offense not you know overly inspiring, you know, it's gonna be hard. They're gonna be, you know, and, and again, you know, it's Indiana, man. Like it is, you know, one of those places where the pressure cooker turns on early. And, you know, if, if they bow out here in the first round of the Big, Big Ten tournament and they go to the NIT, it, it is going to be a tough offseason. It's going to be a really tough offseason. All right. I, I got one for you guys. I, I think this might be the number one that people are kind of overlooking. Mike Bray. They're an 11 seed right now. They've got one of the top freshmen in the country, in, in Blake Wesley, who, who could be a first-round pick, should be a first-round pick. We thought they were going to be in, you know, second in the in the ACC there. Um, we thought they were going to be in as a lock for the most part. Now they're kind of, what, in the 11, right in that 11 range. Then they might get Virginia Tech in the quarterfinals. That That is not an easy game. If they lose that game, they're sweating it out. And if Mike Bray, there was a lot of pressure, not again. Mike Bray is never going to be fired at Notre Dame. Everybody loves Mike Bray. There's no chance he gets fired. But if he doesn't get in the tournament and he loses Wesley, does he go in to Jack Swarbrick and say, you know what? This is, you know what? I'm done. I'm I'm good. I want to go to the beach in Delaware. I'm going to drink. I'm going to have fun. 
I'm, I'm, I'm out. I don't know, but I, I feel like this, this <laughs> season had so much promise halfway through it of them not being on the bubble, but like locking themselves in. And part of the problem was they're in the ACC. So nobody other than Duke can lock themselves in. And we've already talked about Wake. Um, you know, you, you can talk about Miami, Carolina, because of the win against Duke, they're fine. But I think, Mike Bray, this is a big week and a big game against probably, you know, it's Clemson, Virginia Tech. Uh, I think it's going to be Virginia Tech, but who knows with the Hokies. I, I struggle with it because, again, they're the second seed in a tournament. That just tells you how bad things are. So if they were to lose, yeah. Yeah. everyone else should be sweating them. I mean, Miami, uh, <laughs> I mean, Wake, like everybody else should and, be and sweating. And I think Notre Dame, I think Notre Dame's still a first four team at worst, even if they lose to Virginia Tech. Yeah, I think they're in. But I think but again, to, it's right? one of those like you're 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 kind of backing your way in at that point. And yeah. Yeah. you know, people are talking about are you in, are you not in? I, again, I, I think they're in, but it's one of those things where uh, I think it's an important game for Mike Bray. I think they can, you know, they, they beat Virginia Tech. Then they get uh, then they get Carolina potentially. You win a couple of these, you get some momentum. You can go all the way up, you know, from a 10 or an 11. You probably don't want to go to an 8-9, but that's probably where you end up. Who else? What, what other coaches? I, I would say Juwan Howard is somebody coming yeah. back now that – that there's probably some pressure on Juwan Howard. First of all, in the in the uh, handshake line, there might be some pressure on Juwan Howard now, right? I, I think he's good. I, I, I think now, you know, they've been offered so many jobs coming yeah. after Juwan now. He's come out of this. I mean, he's he's a reigning national coach of the year. I, I don't think there's any pressure on him. I think I don't mean that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, there's I, no yeah, pressure on his he, job. He, he, even at, I think it's just him staying though. He has does to he win the say, public, I think it's does public he say, perception. Yeah, that, that's my thing. I'm thinking, does yeah. he say, you know what? I don't want to deal with this college crap no more. I'm going to go get me an NBA job. I mean, that's more of where I think his pressure is going to be because he's yeah. got to be thinking that, like, you know, now he's a hot, tomato, a hot commodity on the next level. So there's got to be some legitimate concern. Did that though. hurt him, though? Do you think that incident hurt him in any way with being hired at the next level? I don't think they care because they don't shake hands anyway. <laughs> they don't. You know, they hug. Sit there, wave. A yeah, lot of them wave, hug, though, RC. Yeah, 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 but if you're friends with them or something like that, right. but they can exactly. just go wave. I mean, yeah, nobody. The coaches small, wave. Ain't nobody. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nobody coaches wave Javon anyway. The star players generally, some of them. KD doesn't do a lot of it, but like you know, you, you see a bunch of the star players hugging. All right, um, Mike White. I, I think is another one to watch. Again, the. the what I would watch for with Mike White is, does Ole Miss make a move with Kermit Davis? And if they do, which I think is a, a realistic possibility, Mike White played with the AD at, at Ole Miss. They played together. They're super close. So could Mike White say, you know what? I'm tired of this fan base. It's killing me because I'm not Billy Donovan. I've been in the tournament every damn year. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going back home to Ole Miss where I played. I don't know, but again, it's it's a possibility. That's all I'm saying. It's keep an eye on Mike White and kind of what happens and, over there. And I'll he say should. one thing on Ole Miss too. We we know that when Mississippi State does something, Ole Miss likes to respond. They do this in football. They do this yeah. in everything else. And, and Mississippi State's going to do something. Yeah, Mississippi State's doing something. So it wouldn't so. surprise me if Ole Miss does something as well. Can I give you a couple names of guys that that I think? can move up because of this week? Because uh, I've been so negative. I hate being negative, Nancy. But um, Grant McCaslin. Grant McCaslin, I think if he wins and gets in the NCAA tournament, he got in last year, and, and obviously they won a couple games. I think he puts himself – he's already in the equation for any of these SEC jobs, I think, that open up. But, man, if he can get back to the tournament, then, then he, you win the press conference with him and so many of these – and he's a hell of a coach. Came from the Scott Drew tree, like – who else you want to hire guys from that Scott Drew tree, don't you? Because they they not only win games, but like they coach with positivity. It's like they're always happy. They're always, I mean, like there's no happier place on earth than than being around Baylor basketball these days. So uh who because else? Who else? I can see you at Kansas State too. Yeah, yeah, K State, State, no doubt. Um, All right. Well, listen, when we come back. We will give you a tourney preview, and we'll tell you which tournament 
that we would like to attend. Also, our biggest sleeper this week. So stick around. We'll be right back. You're clear. All right. We got more questions, fellas. First of all, uh, Sweeney, our guy Bensky, who's in the chat many nights on After Dark, uh, just wants you to know that you'd look great with frosted tips. If you've never considered that. I don't know if I can pull the I don't know if I can pull the Evan Washburn, but man, I appreciate the compliment. I appreciate the compliment. I had a I had a I did that once when I was younger. I, oh, I got to admit, I went through a little little stage there. Got frosted tips when I was. We about need to get Greg and, five years old. We need Greg not and a good look. to go searching through all archives of the world to try to. There was find no social media. I don't know if you'll find them. <laughs> One minute. Go I'm to old. Like there was ba- no social media. Go to his, like parents' basement. Dig them up. We gotta. We gotta find something here. They gotta be somewhere. They all right. Not somewhere. only does Bensky uh, give out some great frosted trip tips recommendations, he also asks good questions. Uh, for the tournament, would you rather have a solid six-year point guard or a top ten pick that is a freshman or a sophomore? I'd want to know the guys, 30 seconds. but I, I would say I would lean towards having the the explosion. You know, I think you know you, you'd want to know the rest of the roster, but I'd rather roll the dice with the talent. So you take Paolo over Colin Gillespie is basically what he's asking you. Yeah, point guard Paolo. Yes, I would take Paolo over Colin Gillespie. All right, all right. I don't know. I don't know. You I'm know me. A six year guy. I need a six year guy. I mean, Jaden Ivey or Colin Gillespie. Jaden Ivey's yeah, yeah. Jaden Ivey's going to be interesting because he can certainly win you some games, you but I think he can lose him too. All right, welcome back to the Field of 68s After Dark. I'm Jeff Goodman from Stadium. I'm joined by Randolph Childress and Kevin Sweeney. Make sure if you are watching um, on our YouTube channel, on Twitter, you can ask us questions. Make sure you uh, like, hit that like button for sure. And again, we're on every single night from 11 till 12 Eastern. But later this week, it's going to go from uh, 11 to 12, we're going to start at midnight because of all the conference tournaments that are starting up. And we're going to be live in New York later this week. I'll be there Thursday night, Madison Square Garden. The boys then go to Barclays. We're, we're there again Friday night. And then they go to Barclays for ACC on Saturday night. All right, big, big week. The big boy tournaments start up. They kind of start up today, but I don't really count starting up when Pitt plays BC and, you know, Clemson plays NC state and Louisville plays uh, Georgia tech. Um, all right, let's start guys kind of rapid fire here. Cause we don't have a ton of time, but uh, which tournament would you choose to attend? If you could go to any league tournament this week, RC, where would you go? I would want to go, I'd say to, to the pack 12. Why? It's in Vegas. There you go. Good That's answer. my answer, too. Answer. And you get, hey, you get the, the Pac-12, you get the Mountain West, and and yeah. you get a little whack. You get yeah. a little whack action, too. Yeah. I was I was pleading for it the other night. <laughs> we were on the call. I was like, man, can we, can we go to Vegas and get a game? Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the reason why. The rest of it, New York, whatever. It's cool. My day Give Saturday. My day Saturday. I land in the morning. I'm going to hit the blackjack table right when I land, even oh. with no sleep. Who cares? I'm going to hit it. <laughs> then, I'm, then I'm going Mountain West at, at 3 o'clock. Then I go Pac-12 at 6. Then I'm going to have a hell of a dinner, a steak dinner at SDK. And then I'm going to hit the blackjack table some more. Indy, Sweeney, where are you going? I'm off to Indy uh, to see the Big Ten tournament. I think it's going to be awesome. you got bubble teams. You've got top 10 picks. I mean, it's great. But <laughs> if I could go anywhere, I'd be at yeah. the SEC tournament because I think the energy – you know, yeah. with the top four teams, yeah. you know, Kentucky, Auburn, Tennessee, Arkansas, the fan bases, like yeah. the, you know, the stakes at play for seeding. I mean, the rematches, like that one is going to be so much fun. I mean, the Big Ten's going to be great. There's a lot there, but I, I would love to be in Tampa this week. I've, I've done that in Tampa, ACC in Tampa before. And I like that kind of some good outdoor spots right down the street. Uh, hotels, it's right on the water. It, it's It's great. All right. Uh, I would do again, Vegas. I'm with RC on that one. As you get older, you learn Sweeney. Yeah. It, you just go to Vegas <laughs> whenever we can get to Vegas legally with our, with our, our, our significant others, um, thinking that we're working. You, you just yeah. go to Vegas. You go to Vegas. Fair All enough. right. Uh, biggest sleeper this week. I'll start with that one. 
I'm going, and our producer Greg's going to be really, really excited with me here. I'll probably jinx it. I'm going with the Michigan State Spartans, the number seven seed in the Big Ten. They still have a coach named Tom Izzo last I looked. So uh, I'm going to go with Michigan State as my biggest sleeper this week. Uh, RC, who you got? I'm actually going to go with the Tar Heels, believe it or not. I, okay. I, 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 and we talked about it, and it's not because of Amando Baycott. It's because of R.J. Davis. I think he's yeah. emerging as a point guard, and you saw his dominance, I would say, in the Carolina and the Duke game. I have I saw it in glimpses early, and I think he's on the right path. I'll go with Seton Hall. Ooh. I, I think you know they, they've won five straight coming in, You know, one on the road at Creighton. I know they didn't have an empire, but they've been competitive. You know, I, I think you know, at Madison Square Garden, they, they can make a little bit of noise this week. Okay. Uh, top two seed in any league tournament, most vulnerable. Uh, I'm going to start since I took Michigan State, the seven seed. I'm going to say they're going to beat Wisconsin. I've been tooting Wisconsin's horn all year because of what they've done. That doesn't necessarily mean I believe in them, especially with Johnny Davis being banged up. It's not bad, but he's had a couple now leg and ankle issues over the last week or so. So I'm going to say uh, number two, Wisconsin. Uh, Sweeney? Who you got? I got I got Providence because I'm worried about Al Durham. You know, if he plays, I really like their group. But you know, you take one piece out, it gets ugly quick. I think you know they, they've battled. They really battled against Villanova, but it wouldn't surprise me if they have an early exit. And I don't think it'd be the worst thing for him, quite frankly. You know, to get their guys healthy at yep. end of March. You guys, took, well, you took one of my. I'm I'm going to go with Duke. I'm concerned about Duke from what we just talked about. Mentally, are these guys worn out from this tour, and yeah. are they tough enough to be resilient? for what the run they're going to need to respond in this, in this ACC tournament and in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and, and again, they don't shoot the ball great. And, and you, you know, six games in six days. I mean, in it, over the course of the tournament, they got to win, not in six days. But I, I, I'm concerned about their ability to make shots and point guard. You got play. about a minute left. The matchup you most want to see at any point, I'm going Kentucky-Auburn in the SEC title game. I mean, we, we, we saw it, but we didn't see it. I feel like we didn't see it because we didn't see Ty Ty and we didn't see Severe Wheeler for a key stretch in that game. So that's the one I want to see. RC? Just conference tournaments? Yep. Any any matchup that you want to see? I, I say that. Actually, no. I want to see UNC and Duke rematch. I want to see the intensity yeah. going back yeah. for that. There's so much in play yep. right now. I want to see that rematch. Yeah, a lot of Instagram comments already had, so we'll see what happens there. <laughs> uh, I, I vote Auburn, Kentucky. I also would love to see Auburn, Arkansas. You know, I saw Zepp yeah. Jasper had some comments today about you know how how much they want to get Arkansas back, and they felt a little disrespected by how Arkansas celebrated the way they beat them. That that could be a lot of fun if we get that one. SEC is gonna be so much fun, man. So much fun. Listen, SEC is gonna be a blast. All of it's gonna be a blast this week. Uh, make sure you come back every single night. Field of 68 after dark. For Kevin Sweeney, for Randolph Childress, I'm Jeff Goodman. We're out. And you're clear. All right. All right. It is the afters, and uh, we will definitely take your questions. Um, I'm trying to think, did we, did we leave off anything? I think we covered pretty much everything that we were trying to cover tonight. The A-10 is an interesting league, though. We, we didn't really talk about that, but I wonder if there's a way, is there a way that the A-10 could get three bids, guys? Uh, I don't think so. St. Bonnie's wins, okay? If St. Bonnie's, let me pull it up. I don't know if I have it here. I did. You, you're if essentially Saint, looking for Bonaventure or Dayton to win the auto bid and then Davidson or VCU and VCU to get at large. Yeah. Bonnie's beats Davidson in the final, in, in, in the semis. Yeah. VCU, Dayton are in the other semis. So Bonnie's wins the whole, and, and Bonnie's beats whoever could be Dayton in the, in the finals. So Saint, Bonnie's beats Dayton in the finals. They beat Davidson in the semis. Yes or no? I think it's be hard to get VCU in there. If you steal a bid, I mean, that, that could literally be the difference is you're just taking one bid away from VCU. That would have been VCU's bid, but, yeah. you know, I, mm. I'd love to see it because I, I think the A-10 tournament is going to be so fun because there's six top 100 teams, and there's, you know, really, I think four or five that are, you know, teams you think could win an NCAA tournament game. 
you know, St. Louis has been really good, you know, considering what they lost, you know, with, with, with Perkins, you know, Bonnie's is old as heck. VCU right. has been outstanding since they lost Ace, or since they got Ace Baldwin back. Dayton's been awesome since the first two weeks of the year. Davidson's 15 and three and you know, one of the best leagues in the country. Like this tournament is going to be a blast because everyone has something to play for. Um, and nothing has ever anyone, not, no, no one has locked anything in. I mean, Dave, Davidson's probably okay. But, you know, even they probably feel like they want to win the conference tournament to avoid at least the first four in date. It reminds I, me of the SEC. They got, they got four teams that wouldn't surprise any of us if they would have won it. Yep. I got a question for, for RC in the chat I'm looking at here from Joey. Uh, Joey Steven. Uh, toughest guy you ever had to guard in college and the toughest defender you ever went up against. Who, who, who did the best job on you? Who did you just not want to see that guarded you? Wow. Um Harold Dean was pretty good. They had another guy that was there with Virginia that was pretty good back then. I can't think of his name. Really long, athletic guy, and I used to always have to be like, I got to double move this guy to get past Really? Him. Yeah. Uh, guarding them, I would say yeah. my freshman year going against Kenny Anderson. <laughs> yeah, that couldn't have been fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think after the game against me, he just decided he was going pro. I think he was going pro anyway. He knew he was going pro. <laughs> After he played against me as a freshman, so he had so much shaking back, oh, didn't he? Oh my gosh, he was unreal with that ball in his hands. Yeah, he was, he was, no doubt. Greg, what do we got? We got a lot of good questions cooking right now, fellas. Uh, from our Ooh. friend Cooper Watson, Ooh. can Wake Forest still get in the tournament with a loss to Boston College tomorrow? Ooh, boy, I they no. probably not. They probably no. get. They you might can't. not. You don't want to tempt fate. I mean, the thing with no. them, I've kind of said, like, look, if a team goes 13 and seven or 14 and six in the ACC, they're going to get it. Like, the committee's going to put that team in every time. But, like, 18 of their 23 wins right now are against Q3 and Q4. And if you lose a Q3 game to Boston College, you are really tempting fate. Yeah. They might, they, you might sneak in, but you, you're, you know, really what's going to be bad. You know, what's going to suck, though. Like, if, if the ACC realist, if they get five teams in, like, what garbage is that this year? Because it, it does not deserve five teams. No. And you're talking about three of them that are going to just sneak in. Carolina at least earned its way in now. Right. And I think but, they but need what? to validate it and get back. I mean, that Duke kind of went, gave them the resume builder. But I still think to, to, to be like, all right, there's no doubt they're in to get a decent seed. They need to get to the finals to play against to play against Duke in the, in the finals. All the other teams, I mean, I, I I think Wake needs to just to be safe because the whoever they the Boston College game can only hurt them. Like they gain right. nothing by beating Boston College, so that does nothing from a resume standpoint. My question goes into what happens in one of these leagues if there's someone steals a bid. Right. Then it gets scary if you're Wake. Totally. So you totally. got like we beat talked a, about. You St. Bonaventure win the, wins the A-10. Yeah, you got to win two games, you know, to just to put – like, it's not right. just beating B.C. They got to beat Carolina. They got to beat yeah. a higher – they got to be. They got to win a next seed game just to be safe that they're in. Anything short of that, now you're watching everyone else to be like, hey, if they still a bid, yeah. we may be somebody on the outside looking in. I will say Very the one true. thing with the ACC teams, though, like, with the exception, really, of, of Wake Forest, right, because Wake – doesn't have that truly elite win. Mm. Like North Carolina did go, go and beat Duke at Cameron. Miami beat Duke at Cameron. Notre yep. Dame beat Kentucky. Like, you know, I, I think you know, everyone's kind of annoyed in North Carolina all of a sudden after the Duke game. And, and we forget that two months ago and three months ago was when Miami and Notre Dame did their work. The game should still count the same. It still, it still is a great win. It's still a, a resume topper. It's why I think both those teams deserve to get in. But again, I mean, it's, it's thin and you do not want to tempt fate here. You do not want, you want to wake up on selection Sunday. You know what and, like, it is? Get a nice too? shower and walk around and have no stress. You, you know what it is? I mean, think about what the committee has done over the last few years in penalizing those teams that don't play anybody in, in non-conference. Yes, they that's have. where you don't want to give them any opportunity. And if you yep. lose to BC and they take that into account as well, then you're in trouble. Then you're in trouble. And, and again, I get it. Like if you're Forbes, you're scheduling to win games this year. Yeah. Right. You're the reason for it. Yeah. I, I okay. understand it. You're trying to get wake back. And, and honestly, this year, 
just to me in the conversation is, is a big step forward for that program. But, but ultimately, when you're looking at it and, and the committee looks at it, you, you just wonder how much they're going to look at that, that strength of schedule in the non-conference. So, what else? We I got, got a fun one here that uh, I'm kind of freestyling, but Matthew Benchich just said, Buddy Beheim gets hot again and they win the ACC. That got me thinking, who's the worst team? Like, Syracuse is a bad team. Who's the worst team that you could actually see making a conference tournament title run? Oregon. <laughs> They're a horrible team right now. But Dane Altman's such a good coach that in the Pac-12 is a mid-major league that who knows? Yeah. yeah. You think I'm ever going to be invited back to, you know, Pac- I'm, yeah. I have to go to the Pac-12 title game. And I've called them a mid-major league all year. Probably I just hope smart. Arizona's in the finals. Well, only because I want to see my boy Kerr. Yeah. yeah. Are you, you going to give him any – you got a headband for him, Goodman? Like, what, what's the deal here? Are you doing a, I got to bring him something. Handshake? Like, what's the, what's, the, what's the Kerr deal? I'll probably – maybe I'll, I'll – I'll, I don't know. Maybe I'll bring him some of my winning chips or something from, from the morning blackjack round or something. <laughs> it's very you know? presumptuous I mean, of we you, could, Goodman. It's very presumptuous. It's the beautiful thing these round. days. What's that? You're very presumptuous that you're winning in blackjack that morning. Yeah, you hit a good point. You got to be confident, lose. man. You got to be confident. <laughs> no, I usually lose. But um, how about that? Like, you think about it. Years ago, I would um, I would worry about them. You know, I'd take out, uh, like, kids that I knew from covering them and recruiting. I would take them out for dinners or whatever. And people would always, you know, you see me out and they'd be like, you, you can't pay for them or something like that. Now you can do whatever the hell you want. I could give Kerr a $100 chip. If there is to be a feel the 68 athlete, the athlete needs to be Kirk Carissa. Like that, that just needs yeah. to be a thing. Yes. Like if we're ever getting an athlete here, it's Kerr. No, I think we're going to bring Kerr on like win, lose, whatever. We're Kerr should be making like weekly appearances from here on out. <laughs> he's a riot. He's he got a ton of personality. Yes. No yes. No, no question. This is a no. Hall of Fame chat uh, comment from Colin Schumann. Goodman seems like the type of guy to split tens. Never, never. I play the right way. I lose a lot more than I win, but I always play the right way. I'm trying to teach my daughter. I, I, I actually taught my daughter in Puerto Rico because the age there is 18. So she's learning the right way to play. I get the hell up if I can. If there's any knuckleheads playing there that, and I usually play, in, you know, I go to third base and make sure, but yeah, yeah, no, I, I love blackjack. I'll sit there, you know, I'll sit there as long as I can um, before the game starts, probably Saturday. All right. Back to some other questions. I like that uh, we may have skipped over from earlier. This is from Duran Darcy or maybe Darren Darcy. Uh, said last year, Georgia Tech and Georgetown won their conference tournaments as teams that wouldn't get in. Do you see a team that could do that this year? Maybe Arizona State, maybe Utah. Got any teams to keep an eye on? Look, Arizona State has been hot. You know, I, again, I don't you know see why. Them. You know when it turned for him, Sweeney? I when I did dinner with Bobby Hurley. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Telling you, stop by. Did a little dinner after that Arizona UCLA game. Check their record ever since. Hey, man, if they beat Arizona, I mean, it's a huge step to beat Arizona. But if they do, like, they're probably going to win that thing and get the auto bit. Like, like if they beat Arizona, like they're not losing to UCLA. If it's they do, happening. no ju- way they just going. imagine what Bobby Hurley would be like if they ever oh. get the auto bit coming out of nowhere. Bobby Hurley would be a, a maniac. He would like Danny's <laughs> at a different level right now, but I think Bobby could get even above Danny. If, if, if that happens, if they're in the game, like if, if they're yeah. like, if there's like, oh. if, it's, if it's like the U four and oh they're right goodness. there against Arizona in a rivalry yeah. game in Vegas. Oh man. Yeah. That be ridiculous. I know I should have just went to Vegas from start to finish. Like, yeah. Why am why did I do Big East and the Big Ten? Just like that's yeah. a rookie move. That's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's on me. That's you don't want to screw that one up. Are you are you even getting to St. Elmo's? Like, what, what's the deal here, Goodman? Are we, are we no, I, I, there's no chance I can get to St. Elmo's unless we have it delivered. Oh, geez. we need to have. We, we can't be the sports writers like tweeting about St. Elmo with the. We, we, well, we got cocktail sauce here at the. Uh, who can the, who the, can bring <laughs> it? I mean, I will pay. 
I will pay somebody a really, really good tip to deliver. Maybe I'll make, tweet that make out. G do yeah, it. What are you talking? If you're, pay, if you're paying that. anyone to deliver St. Elmo's, it's me, Goodman. Come on. All right. All right. Uh, you're in. You are in. I mean, if you listen, if you go get in between games, we just got to make sure they're open that hour. Because oh, I feel man. like I tried. I I got it twice when I was in um, Indy for the three week stretch last year. I, I only got it twice, and uh, I should have had it like five or six times but I feel like they were closed for a little bit of they they, they had the, yeah they said like a waiter died of covid yeah so they were closed for a week it was like a whole exactly yeah. oh well what else we got Sweeney, what else we i'm got? gonna throw one your way uh, i know you're a loyola chicago guy slash i think by default a porter moser guy this is from yeah. bob woodard yeah. does oklahoma have any chance of winning the big 12 tournament no but i will say this i don't think they're beating baylor but you want the first big bubble twist of the week? If Go Oklahoma ahead. beats Baylor, all of a sudden, they're right there. Like, they are right there. And again, they'd be 18 and 15 if they lost their next game, so it's still 50-50. But it's going to be tough to keep them out if they have 18 wins, a win over Baylor on a neutral court. You know, like, again, I don't think they're going to win that game. But if you're looking for a twist, there's your twist right there. Is Oklahoma but I'll say this. Baylor, Baylor is vulnerable. Like Agreed. Baylor is so vulnerable. They've got six six players. Their seventh player is is you know a D two transfer. So I don't I don't know if Cryer's coming back or not. I haven't. I, I need to check on that tomorrow. But if they don't have Cryer, they're just so thin that again I think you know some foul trouble or you know Akinjo having kind of one of his shooting performances, which he's had a bunch lately. You can beat them if you're Oklahoma. Yeah. And if they do, they'll be right there. I mean, it wouldn't be a lock, but it would get them. It would get them right back in the conversation. Speaking of injuries, have you guys heard any updates on Johnny Davis? Yeah, he's fine. He's. he's I fine? mean, okay. he says he's fine. It's not a major ankle injury. Gotcha. He's been banged but I think up it's going to bother him. Two months. He really has. Right. I mean, you know, that that mid that stretch when he wasn't making jump shots, yeah. he wasn't getting lift because his legs have just been beat up the whole way. Yep. Yep. All right, last uh, question that we got uh, from the chat is from TJ. If Rutgers loses to Iowa off that double bye, do they have any chance of still getting in the tournament? They have a chance, but it would require the committee basically ignoring the fact that they'll have the worst metrics of any NCAA tournament team ever and relying on the quality wins. All right. It wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out, it. but yeah. All right, let's uh... – Let's go with our cheers, boys. I got to get something in yeah. here. My high noons. I'm all over high noons. Is this? Hey, Goodman. Turn into Porzella before our eyes. Good watermelon high noon. I love these things. <laughs> uh, all right. Who's going first? I'll go first. I'm going to go with Mike Pagese. I think he's been put in a tough situation this year for, yeah, for Villanova. I mean, for Louisville to. Yep. to get a, a you know an ACC tournament win, any win in the postseason is a big one. So, I think to Mike Bugis. Uh to uh Scott Davenport. I mean, yeah, what yeah, an awesome I like it. Mike Bugis first. Sorry. Yes, uh, but I mean that's so so cool. I mean, first off, to win it and have you know Louisville behind him. You know the number of fans. Yeah. Like, I, I yeah. can't I can't imagine all those are are diehard Bellarmine fans. Those are people who came out because of Louisville and the yep. city caring about basketball. And then to go out and buy out the bar, you know, after the game, like that was that was pretty cool, man. So that was what college basketball's about, and you know, congrats to him. Got to Davenport. Uh, I'm going with uh, Peter Kiss and Brian. It's not his fault, not his no. fault. What happened in the crowd at all? Not Brian's players' fault. Unfortunately, it gets overshadowed a little bit, but they beat the living crap. Out of Wagner from from start to finish tonight. I mean, that was one hell of a win. Impressive. And we probably should have gotten Peter Kiss on the show tonight, to be honest. I don't know if they would have allowed it. Um, but, man, he looks like somebody that would, you know, like Kerr Kreese, Peter Kiss. They just they, – they both look like they they just have fun out there. And that's kind of what it's about this week. Just, just having fun, enjoying it. That's what college basketball is all about. And, uh, again, thanks for joining us. Field of 68 After Dark. To Peter K.